All right. Uh, Okay, so Andreu is a PhD student from the group of uh, Aurora Hernandez, and he's been in the department for, I think, a year and something, or a couple of years already. Uh, and he's going to talk about uh, red blood cells and membrane modeling. Uh, please, Andreu. Thanks, Antonio. Uh, okay, yes, today I'm going to talk about uh, a few advances we have been doing in membrane modeling. Uh, split in two parts. Well, first I will give you a bit of a background and then the we will talk about the stream function part and then the Gaussian curvature part. Uh, first of all, a quick overview. The cellular membrane is present in all cells, even some viruses like the HIV or the, the COVID virus are enveloped envelop viruses with a membrane. Uh, it's a lipidic delayer formed by phospholipids uh, that can flow between each among each other. Mm. So we could say it's a uh, two-dimensional fluid surface. And it's key to it's key to the pros, uh, to some cells for their function, like the red blood cells. And some diseases and some illnesses can affect its properties, uh, also affecting the function of such cells, like for example malaria. Uh, moreover, we have a couple of constraints when modeling the cellular membrane. Uh, this this membrane is semi permeable. So there is an osmotic pressure uh, between the cell and the and the surrounding fluid that will maintain our volume enclosed volume constant. Also, as the number of lipids that form the cell is constant over time, the cell usually or well, the membrane usually it's not <laughs> making lipids all the time. Uh, the area of the membrane will also have to be maintained constant along the time. So these are two constraints that our model will have to uh, ensure. And as the area is constant, the surface tension will be will not play any role in, in the cellular membrane. Its energy will be basically depend on the curvature of the surface. In uh, here we have the, the Kanghan Halfrich free energy would be the, the one that will uh, explain the, the cellular membrane that will have two terms. The second integral right now, we can skip over it. Uh, it's the Gaussian curvature and it, it, it will be constant under, it's a topological constant. So if we have no topological transitions, uh, it would just be a constant. And the first term of the integral, it's what uh, will give us the shape of a single. It's the mean, uh, it depends on the mean curvature and the spontaneous curvature. C0, where the spon when, um, which will be is simply at which, which curvature is the equilibrium, uh, it's the equilibrium one. For example, for an ellipsoid, we can get a, if we start from, with an ellipsoid and we minimize this energy, we obtain this shape that we're seeing uh, in the video. That is the biconcave discoid, I think it's called. It's the shape of a red blood cell that we obtain with a given area and volume uh, that an ellipse, some ellipsoids uh, have. The methodology used to compute these membranes will be a phase field, a phase field model. Uh, for a phase field model, we will define an order parameter that will tell us for a point in space if that point belongs to, to which phase it belongs. The phases in our case will be intracellular volume, extracellular volume, and the interface between these two volumes will be the, the membrane. That it's where the order parameter phi will take values between minus one and plus one. We can see here in, on the left uh, uh, an example of a simulation using a, on a phase field model of a membrane. We can see the, all the blue part is the 
minus one volume, the, the external volume, the internal volume is the red. So the white part what will be what we'll define as, 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 the, as the membrane. In this methodology, we can rewrite the energy of and the half rich energy like this on function of phi, and we will add gamma and beta that will be two Lagrange multipliers to ensure area and volume conservation. Finally, we can compute the temporal evolution with the dynamic equation, but with the from the derivative of the energy, like a diffusive process. And this derivative of the energy, we can also tell, say that it's a chem chemical potential. We can also work on three-dimensional systems. In this case, we will have to represent it by plotting the surface where phi is equal to zero, that it will be the position of the membrane. And with this overview done on what are we doing and what are we working on, the first thing that, that I will talk about is how we add flow to the systems. We wanted to see a cell in a flow, like a cell in a, in a microchannel. And this has been already done in several ways. But most of the, the, the methods, the, uh, the already known methods or used methods, uh, are highly complex to implement. Uh, also have, you need some fine tuning to ensure some hydrodynamic properties uh, like uh, compressibility can be for if you are using particle dynamic uh, can also be very hard to change a simple a constant like the viscosity so as all these methods are complex even if they can work we decided to develop a new one the motivation is that uh, as we said, some illnesses uh, uh, affect the membrane. We're interested in characterizing the membrane. And if you can put a membrane inside the flow and you can control this flow, uh, it's a way to obtain more information of such membrane. And you can do it experimentally. So a good model behind the experiments uh, could characterize our, our membranes. To add a flow, what we will do is get the, the, the temporal equation, the dynamic equation, and add it a velocity term coupled with the gradient of phi, because the gradient of phi is only different than zero in the membrane. So to compute a, an, a simulation with a flow, we just need uh, the velocity field B. The hard part, though, <laughs> is getting the velocity uh, field. As we all know, the Navier-Stokes equations can be really hard to solve computationally. Uh, so we will go to the Stokes equation as we are working on low Reynolds numbers. But even then, solving for the pressure and the velocity can be tricky. And so instead of using the of solving velocity and pressure, what we will do is solve for the vorticity omega and the stream function g. Uh, solving the system for these parameters, we get this system of equations that give us the evolution of of a membrane with an external one with a inside a flow. If you want to go into detail, we can do it later of how these equations are obtained. But in the end, what we have here is two Poisson problems and the previous dynamic equation. So we have to. Even we have to solve, even though we have to solve two new equations, we have to solve the same problem. So you just have to uh, use the same method twice. Uh, also, as it's based in the incompressibility of the of the fluid and the Stokes equation, without anything else, it's let's say simple to to implement. We can use implement any flow we want that has a, an analytical expression for its velocity profile in the absence of an obstacle. So, for example, Poisson, Cowet, we we know the the, shape, the velocity profile that this that these flows have in the absence of any obstacle. 
and to implement them what we all, the only thing we need is the value of the stream function and the vorticity at the walls of the channel so if you know the velocity you can you can integrate it to get the to get the stream function you can derivate to get the vorticity you compute which is the value at the walls and then uh, the system of equations will solve the the flow through all the channel Mm. However, this, at least on the, the bottom left, in the stream function, we also plot the, the velocity field. And here, the velocity field seems that it's not highly influenced by the cell. However, this happens because the cell mostly flows with the, with the liquid. But well, what we will do is then compare the stream function of the simulation at any given time with the stream function that we would have for a flow that that has no obstacle in it, that has no membrane, C0, but obtaining the plot on the bottom right, we can see that the influence of the cell carries a bit away. Uh, this number is is related to the friction between the, the membrane and the fluid. And we can sum it, integrate it, the square value, and we see that it decays over time into a plateau. From this, we can we can say that it's a good method to to study the conversions to the stationary state of the system. We can also do the same with the vorticity, comparing the vorticity at any given point with the vorticity of that you would expect for, for example, a post-cell flow in the absence of a membrane, which also plateaus the same way as as the stream function. So, some results, for example, Kowet. In the coed flow, we can see uh, how the membrane al almost aligns with the flow with a slight tilt. Uh, uh, we plot the, the vorticity, the stream function, and the variation of the stream function because of the influence of the membrane. And something interesting that we can see here is that for all membranes that are flat, mostly flat shape, like this here, uh, in the um, in the vortice, like a like a dipole, <laughs> in such in some way, as the vorticity generated at one point is the opposite as the as the vorticity generated at the opposite point. But to ensure that our model is good, that it shows proper results, we have studied red blood cells in a post-cell flow, as it's a known, a known system. And here we have some steady state solutions uh, that at higher speeds, well, at, at, low, at lower speeds, the, well, the cell won't move. <laughs> at higher speeds, then it develops a slipper shape that it's called. It's this shape that we can see in the bottom in the bottom simulations. If we keep turning up the velocity, we get a parachute shape like this. Uh, that uh, mostly get, it's like it's when the cell gets a shape that it's more or less like the post-cell profile of the velocities. This is just a way to prove that the method the method is working. Uh, our model gives known results and can reproduce them. Now for more interesting, ah, well, okay, yes. I talked about the variation produced for the stream function, but we all know that the stream function is not something that for us is intuitive, let's say, but we can compute the field, uh, the influence of the membrane for the velocity field. What we can see is that in the end, the membrane, what it's doing, it's slowing down the fluid in the center of the channel. And this fluid, what we will, what we'll do is go around the cell, uh, having a higher speed close to the walls in the in the surrounding membrane that you would expect for a, a normal post cell without any obstacles. We can compute aside from vorticity and stream function a plethora of, of parameters like pressure, stress, force. Mm, the, more, the biggest problem for us is 
finding which parameter gives us the most valuable information. For newer results, we have studied, usually in, the, in this case, it has been studied the cell inside flows of the of a size on the scale of the cell. So the size of the channel around the size of the of the cell, a bit bigger, but not too much. So we wanted to study. Uh, we started studying much much wider channels. In my much wider channels, we obtain what we call the anti-parachute shape uh, on the right. We call it anti-parachute simply because it's like a flipped over parachute because it's traveling to the right, but even the less, uh, it develops this shape. This happens because on the center of the channel, of a big channel for a possible flow, you have that the velocity is approximately constant. Uh, the wider the channel, the more constant you could say it is, at least for a cell that maintains its size. So if you change the size of the cell and you keep making the channel wider, you get that for the cell, the velocity, it's constant. Proof all this, its membrane. Uh, well, okay. So the video started a bit early, <laughs> a bit late, okay, now. Uh, what we find is that for medium-sized channels, uh, this shape breaks down. Uh, also, at very high speeds, the shape breaks down. That makes us think about a metastable shape. However, the weird part is that it develops a slipper shape, like I showed you before. But usually, like right now, it's developing a slipper shape. Usually, a slipper shape, it's, it has an equilibrium position outside of the middle of the channel. It's not centered. It has a, an uncertain equilibrium position, which doesn't happen for a big, uh, a very wide channel, like we can see here. After developing the slipper shape, it comes back to the center of the channel. Uh, we have studied also, as we told you before, uh, the variation of the vorticity and stream function. Then it integrated, which shows us a, shows us a couple of plateaus that points to the metastability of the anti-parachute shape. Uh, then we went to the opposite. Well, starting from this, we went to the opposite direction of confinement, instead of very wide channels, very narrow channels, much smaller than the size of the cell, which we get a weird shape like this. Uh, you could expect maybe the shape to hold an ellipsoid, well, the membrane to hold an ellipsoid or a discoside shape, but it develops these legs, let's say, uh, which more or less resemble the micro-confined experiments, as they called, in Toma Yellow Group, the Anu Group in Naples. Uh, the shape doesn't match exactly the experiments. It's also it's getting closer. We just, but I'm pretty sure that if we match the confinement level, the area to volume, and everything from the experiments will get exactly the same shape. It just worked for the future. I could not have given it a lot of time to this yet. Uh, as I said, we can implement any flow that has an analytical expression. It, also, it doesn't mean we can, it cannot depend on time. We can make oscillating flows. Here we have a sinusoidal flow for a coed, for a coed flow where we find that for some there's a net displacement perpendicular to the flow from the membrane. Like we can see here when the video starts over, we can see that the cell starts at a lower position than its final one. Like the cell is streaming upwards uh, because of the external flow applied. Or doesn't work for all frequencies, as some frequencies make some movement that it's too symmetrical and, well, not symmetrical, but 
that doesn't swim to any direction in particular. Uh, and here for longer periods or lower frequencies, we can see a flow that doesn't give a net movement to the cell. We also plan to use these variations of flow over time with, well, with Pocell, for example, to study viscoelasticity, cell viscoelasticity. Also, this is also something that we st still have to work, work on. And this is basically what we are being studying with the with the model of of a flow applied to the membranes. The second part would be I will be talking about topological transitions. For the topological transitions, we will have to implement the Gaussian curvature, uh, the term that we, I skipped before. But to give some motivation of why would we, we why I want to study uh, topological transitions? It's basically because it's, it happens in nature constantly, uh, and it's even key in some systems. It's key in cell division, obviously. It's necessary for cell division, <laughs> for mitosis to, well, break the membrane in the, in the last step. The Golgi apparatus and the synaptic system also uses all, tons of vesicles, and to form and destroy these vesicles, you're having topological transitions. And also in the for an infected cell, when it's releasing the, the viruses that it made, the enveloped viruses like COVID, for example, uh, it's also an important step of how this virus gets surrounded by, and breaks off the, the host cell. Uh, we can see well this video, this small video, uh, vesicle formation and vesicle a scheme of vesicle formation and and vesicle fusion fusion with a with a main mem a big membrane, and we will be working basically on vesicle formation in right now. For this, I have to go back for a brief second to the Helfrich energy. And this time, we will look at the Gaussian curvature term. This is the term that relates uh, the two Gaussian radius of curvature multiplied instead of just summed. And what the gauss bonnet theorem tells us is that this integral will be equal to 2 times pi times the genus of the of the system. So if you have no topological transition, this term will be constant. However, this will not be the case anymore. This is something that it's hard to implement and hard to do, and it's not has not been studied a lot. The phase field implementation it's not easy to the eyes. <laughs> we have to implement the Gaussian curvature term, which is a bit hard. We will use the curvature tensor. But to implement the temporal evolution, it's the same as before. We just have to do the functional derivative of this new term. And in this case, we will not be applying a, an external flow, just the curvature, the two curvature energy terms. What we obtain is a model that can give us multiple fission events. Starting with this tube, we see a tube with a spherical cap and a precise spontaneous curvature and Gaussian curvature. The spontaneous curvature will give us the size of the vesicles and in the end, how many vesicles will can we get from a tube? And what we observe is that there's a ordered fission from the tip of the tube to the bottom. This happens because the spherical cap of the tube is, let's say, it's working like a catalyst, uh, making fast, uh, making it faster the, the evolution of the tip into a spherical vesicle. And was the, when this spherical vesicle breaks, it follows with the next one, and so on, until the all the tube has become vesicles.
one important point here is that we can do, we could study without the Gaussian term. Well, you can observe without the Gaussian term in a simulation fission, but when you observe a fission event in, and you're not having this curvature term, the simulation will becomes unstable. The vesicles will grow, will deflate, will explode basically. But here we can see how the vesicles are stable over time. Mm, and not just one, but in this case, eight. For this depends on the, the Gaussian rigidity. That it's, for example, for experiments, it's, diffi it's, the, it's difficult to measure. So there's only, you can only make some indirect measurements that give uh, kappa prime, this Gaussian rigidity, around 15 kVTs, uh, minus 15 kVTs. This is important because, I mean, uh, this being negative implies that fission is promoted. The only thing is that it's hard to reach the, uh, the membrane shape where the Gaussian uh, bending takes over, let's say, or it's important. Uh, we can also change this, this parameter. We can see simulations when the parameter is zero, we will see no break and no fission, as is expected. While when we put the Gaussian curvature negative, we will, we will have the, the fission events. Uh, this exact thing that we modeled is can be reproduced experimentally. We can see here a membrane tube that starts with a spherical tip that forms a ton of connected vesicles by a lever that finally ends up bre uh, breaking down. We're pretty happy with the results as more or less shows this. <laughs> Uh, and in summary, maybe I've been a bit fast speaking, but in summary, what we have done is we developed a successful alternative to introduce the fluid flow. Uh, this model has been based on hydromenonic equations and fluid properties, the, the incompressibility of the system, the Stokes equation, no weird interactions between like dynamic like for the dy dynamic particle simulations that, that are more tricky to, to implement or the lattice Boltzmann methods that are also complex to implement. Uh, we can obtain interesting shapes depending on the confinement. We've seen what we call an anti-parachute shape and the shape that we obtain in the micro, -confine in micro confinement. And we can work easily with time-dependent flows where we find that uh, an oscillating co-wet flow of a given frequency uh, can produce a net perpendicular movement of the cell, movement perpendicular to the flow, uh, flow direction. And then with the addition, we work with adding the Gaussian curvature term in the energy so that we can model properly fission. And we, have, we can do simulations with multiple fission events that as far as I know, has not been has not been done before, and we can obtain for a tube a tube how the fission has an ordered manner, starting from the spherical cap, it's traveling downwards. Uh, and well, thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, uh, feel free. That I I were I went pretty fast. <laughs> Andrew, I oh, have a question actually. When you were mentioning the, <clears throat> when you were mentioning the, I mean, almost at the, uh, almost at the, at the half of the talk, you were mentioning the friction, the effect of the friction between the membrane and the fluid. When you were analyzing the shape of the membrane in different kind of fluids. So, actually, I want to where in the equation that you showed us is encoded the friction term between the membrane and the fluid? Okay, yes, I skipped that. Well, I skipped that. 
I try not to get a lot into the math because it can be boring. But if my presentation decides to, okay. The thing is, I sh I told you what I what I've told you is how we couple the fluid with the membrane, but we didn't tell you how we couple the membrane with the fluid. Okay. Vice versa, I mean. <laughs> yes, because I mean uh... the other way around. Uh, and what we do is, okay, so for the membrane equation, you can add the fluid by computing the flow. The, the flow field and then multiplying it to the gradient of phi because the gradient of phi it's basically the membrane what represents the membrane okay uh, in the case of how the fluid interacts with the, uh, with the membrane and how this flow is perturbed by the membrane it's in this term of the uh, added on the stokes equation and it's basically telling us uh, how Mu in this case is the chemical potential, how the chemical potential uh, is influencing the flow. Okay. So, so between these two terms, they are playing together, deforming the cell and the cell deforming uh, the flow. Okay. It's just that as the cell here, we can play with different viscosities. I can show you even, even if, if the equations if you want. Okay, yes. We'll but in this case, we simply have a, the cell doesn't weigh too much. It's, it just follows, it just flows with the, with the fluid. Okay. So the, the influence is rather small. But if we want, we can put, I mean, I don't, I doesn't put this in the presentation because it's a bit <coughs> long, but you can put a, an homogeneous inhomogeneous viscosity, defining the viscosity for a fluid, even um, the external fluid, the inside fluid, and even a different viscosity for the membrane, if you want. Uh, that will have a shape like this from the outside, for example, in this case, we can say in, at the outside, we will have minus one, viscosity minus one, uh, viscosity one, and in the inside of the cell having viscosity four, and a small transition in the membrane between these two viscosities. Okay. Uh, most of these simulations are equal viscosities, however, but I tried with this several times and it works fine. Okay. okay. Thank um, you. So, Jauma has a question? Yes. Um, yeah. Um, it, in a way, it's a similar question to the one that the one was just asked. Uh, I was concerned about the inner fluid in your in your simulations. You you're actually not solving for the inner fluid, right? Because I mean, you in the in the phase field, it's already implemented the dynamics of the inner fluid. Is that correct? Uh, no, I mean I'm solving for everything, but so you're solving the, uh, Stokes equation in the in the inner fluid too. Yes, but mostly the inner fluid is just flowing, has the same velocity as the surrounding fluid. Uh, the thing is, it's, it's just hard to tell because... So, well, what I'm saying is that if you just, uh, you, you just wrote down a dynamics for the phase field model, yes, supposed to describe the deformation of the, of the, of the main, but this dynamics is coupled to the flow. So the way you write the dynamics of the phase field with a, conserve model B type equation. Yes. It already assumes some some um, flow in in in, uh, in the fluid. It's actually, it, it describes a hydrodynamic coupling which corresponds actually to Darcy flow. Because this equation is used to describe Darcy flow all the time, the, uh, any interface in in Healy show flows and things like that. So I'm not sure Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm I'm not sure it, it is compatible the dynamics that you put in the phase field with the uh, with solving the Stokes equation inside. It could be that for the steady state it's fine because the, you get the right steady state because you're minimizing the the energy. But I'm not so sure about the dynamics. But so you're actually implementing uh, solving for the Stokes flow inside the the the, the cell. Yes. 
but then this in the end boundary conditions do you put in the in the interface in the, in the membrane no we don't put the, as the membrane as the interface is diffuse we don't put any any boundary conditions the thing effectively, is but effectively i mean if you would take the sharp interface limit of your face field you would get some of some boundary conditions which, which yes and the idea is that this is already uh, like the energy equation, the this chemical potential mu, this term that couples with the fluid, it's already taking care how the not just how the membrane is affecting to the fluid. I mean, okay, the so what I'm saying is that if you you take your your phase field model and you take the sharp interface limit, this this gives you some boundary conditions, and these boundary conditions correspond to Darby flow, which is not Stokes flow. I mean, yes, I agree that. There's so a I don't sharp think that, limit. I don't think that you're you uh, I mean I mean if you would take your face field equations, I think that uh, it would be consistent with assuming Darcy flow inside, but not source flow. But so okay. but may, maybe maybe you can discuss this some some other time because this would take yes, some the thing is the basics. <laughs> yeah, I mean this would not be the basics, it's even for me it's before, <laughs> but in the end, we are not doing anything. We are using a new method to solve this, but we are not doing anything new. We there has already been a couple of groups or three or four that has mm, implemented a, an external velocity field uh, to the phase field, and this way, the only thing that we did new in this case it's instead of using a big and complex method of solving the Navier-Stokes equation like Lattice-Boltzmann, that some people also say, well, incompressibility, it's a lattice, a lattice gas, or using uh, dynamic, part, well, no, using any kind of motor to solve the, the whole Navier-Stokes equations, we simply took the Stokes, transform it to vorticity and stream function and solve it simpler, in a simpler way. But we are doing the same that Lattice Boltzmann, just without all the complexity of implementation. So if it's something that it's already understood that works and, and it's, let's say, correct to okay. do. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. Uh... I, I assume that for a simple fluid and a simple flow, it's it's uh, it's better to solve uh, the Stokes equation as you do. I mean, this is a, also a standard method to solve it with the stream function and the vorticity. But what yes. is tricky is the boundary conditions that you put. And for instance, the friction condition that was asked before, uh, uh, it was not clear to me how how is it uh, implemented. So is this implies a no slip condition for the fluid in the membrane, for instance, or there, is there really a, a slip? Uh, on the on the on the membrane. I think it's what you said, Jaume, that it's just uh, uh, that the normal velocity is uh, continuous on the interface, which is like Darcy flow. And this is what that term in the second equation means. Yeah, but th this is what I think. It's not really consistent because it's not Darcy flow; it's a Stokes flow. Hmm. I, don't I mean, I get what you say. It's just I'm not sure like how the phase field moves let's say it doesn't have to be exactly the same, the same. yeah i think it's uh, the, the it's thing is tricky. you're following you're solving the stokes equation outside okay with some boundary conditions but then you have an obstacle which is the, the membrane and you have to define boundary conditions of that obstacle and this obstacle is the form is the forming so it has a velocity and you have to put some condition for the stresses or something, and you, you, you have mentioned some friction, but I'm not so sure. Um, I mean, there could be different physical effects here, whether there is a slip between the membrane and the flow, or whether there is no slip or whatever. I mean, there are different ways of doing that. Hmm. See, I, I mean, I understand you. Solving the Stokes equation, you have to specify the boundary conditions at the, at the membrane, which I don't, I don't, they are not clear to me what, what what is it really uh, included in in the in the phase field formulation for that? But I mean, if you take the the sharp interface limit, you would get what are your hydrodynamic boundary conditions, and you would know exactly what you're putting. 
But yes. that's, what I'm saying is that you have to be careful because your face film is your face film model is is uh, is related actually to Darcy flow. It, it works well with uh, in principle. I think it's only compatible with Darcy flow, but maybe can be adapted to Stokes flow. But as it is, I don't think it is. It's it's it just gives Darcy flow conditions. Mm, probably I'm just forgetting something that technically I know and I just forgot. But there are there are also in the literature or the phase field models for membranes for the group of MISBA, for instance, in Grenoble, yes. where they probably they are more complicated to implement. I think that yours, the Aurora's one, is, is much simpler to implement. But in, in that case of theirs, they do explicitly solve stocks flow flow in both sides. So this is why it's more complicated. But I think that the model B formulation uh, that you're using is it's only compatible with Darcy flow. That's what I'm saying. At least inside, maybe it's maybe you can implement stock flow outside, but inside it, it's, it's it's Darcy flow. I mean, I'm pretty sure that it's, it's not the case. Just mainly because what I'm I'm not doing the the coupling between the the phase field and the velocity flow. It's not something I've done new. That's something I've already taken in how to do it. And no, but for we're not, we're not the only group. The work by, by Felix Campello, who also worked on, on this phase field model with uh, the and Nani, Guillermo Lazaro. I think, yeah, uh, yeah but that, that was that was uh, Darcy flow. Maybe you can give us a, a reference, uh, Andrea, where they explain the, the meaning of this term in terms of the boundary condition that it means. Uh, OK, yeah, I will look for it. I don't have right now, <laughs> as you can imagine, yeah, yeah. all the reference at hand. Uh, uh, I have a, a couple of more questions, if I can uh, interrupt. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you discussed uh, some examples of uh, fission, but could you implement like uh, maybe two drops or two cells coming at each other and, and create a, a fusion event? So you mean combining both models? Yes. Yeah. Combine? No, combining. Yeah. You can say that. I mean, yes, we can. The thing but is. This is in 2D and the other one is in 3D, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, but in in the case of fusion and fission cannot happen in in any in any situation in any system. You need some conditions uh, that we are not, for example, we're not modeling that if there are uh, concentration of proteins necessary to uh, cut the to do the final fission or the fusion. Those are, in the end, highly complex pro, uh, problems. That, for example, throwing two cells, two individual cells together, and look at how they fusion would, I mean, would be possible, but would not be probably a, a real scenario. Mm -hmm. That it happens as easily as we would it would happen with the model how it uh, as as it is. Yes. We could also implement, try to implement the mechanics of, try to make the mechanics of this of the fusion, uh, fusion or fusion, with changing the model. But as it is right now, we could, but I don't think it would be showing us any real case. Okay, and and one more question regarding. Uh... You said you have a, a simpler method to, to solve this, which is taking the vorticity and, and the spin function. Hmm. Um, what exactly is, uh, is, is the numerical like uh, strategy here? How, what is the method that you're using? Is it a finite difference, a finite element? What is yeah, we define a mesh, a lattice of points. Uh, each point we will solve uh, the vorticity and the, and the stream function with the solve Poisson, a Poisson problem. The thing is, as each time step is very close to the, to the previous one, the iterative method, it's, it doesn't take long. We, can, uh -huh. we have tried with different, mm, different precisions and all of them more or less give this, well, all of them give the, the same result. Uh, 
So you're solving for three fields for phi, uh, yes. omega, and, and phi. Okay. Yes, and for low enough velocities or shorter, short enough steps of time, it it doesn't it it doesn't get a problem. <laughs> uh, because we are not solving the, the three of them at the same time. We solve one the, the next the other and the other. And this would give a problem for high velocities or, or big time steps. Mm -hmm. But if the thing, the difference are small enough, uh, it works. It's just fine. But uh, I'm, I guess I'm missing a bit. Uh, how, how is the velocity uh, flowing? You impose some like uh, some gradient of pressure from. Yes. Yeah, but basically. Which, which is the flow? Uh, it's defined just as the walls by defining mm -hmm. the what the boundary condition uh, of the stream function and the vorticity. For example, and the walls of velocity is zero, no? Oh, I mean, could be. Yes, zero. but the, the velocity is zero, but the stream function and the vorticity aren't. Okay. So, uh, for example, in the in the Purcell case, as the velocity profile depends on the gradient of pressure. Uh, the only constant we will have in the at the walls uh, that that defines how the, the how the flow is mm -hmm. uh, will be the that the gradient of pressure. In the case of coet, we will have the velocity of the wall, for example. Mm -hmm. If you have a weird uh, flow profile, we would get another other parameters that would ex explain well explain. Mm -hmm. Define the flow velocity, for example. Okay, very nice. Is there any other more questions? Okay, so if not, uh, thank you very much, Andreu. Uh, and thank you very much, everyone else, for coming. And uh, we'll see you in, the, in a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you, Antonio. Thank you, guys. Bye, thank you, Andreu. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B